Well, hi there. So I'm going to show you how to do my rhombus cowl. And this is uh, what it looks like. It's a really easy stitch. Just a couple things I'll, I'll have to um, help you with to make it even easier. But it's very easy to do. It doesn't have any pearls, although I did put a little bit. I did put some just at the, the base where I put it on. And um, even though it probably wouldn't have curled, I just want to make sure that people with different tensions never have a problem. So um, that's the kind of base I did on it. And so I've got to get you caught up, so I will do that. Um, and um, I'm on a, a loom from one of the circle sets. Um, this one, I th this one is a Michaels from a Michaels set, and it's the big. 41 peg loom and you are going to need an odd peg loom to make this easy uh, because you alternate the stitch so when you have odd peg pegs you can just keep going it's going to alternate what we're doing if you have a round one you can still use it you'll just have to do a different stitch on one peg and you'll it'll look different going down in one line and that can be the back of your cowl so you can still do it if you have an even loom. But um, the, the 41 peg loom in any of the circle sets is odd. So most of you should probably have that one. Okay, so the yarn I'm using. Now I'm using a worsted weight yarn to do this pattern. It's um, a worsted Noro. Although this particular one, Silk Garden it's called, is a little, knits up a little thicker than a normal worsted just because it's got some mohair in it. So it's a little bit fuzzy. So, but it is a worsted and um, it'll just be more lacy if your worsted is thinner. You can also do it in a bulky if you'd like and it still comes out looking the same. It's just your, your little diamond looking things here will just be a little smaller. That's all. So it can be done at, on an assortment of loons as long as they're odd. And uh, like I say, you can do it even. You're just going to have a different one different stitch. And uh, you can blend it in pretty good probably. So anyway, this is the color of this yarn is color 87 Noro Silk Garden and it's really pretty colors. <laughs> they look lighter <laughs> when they're closer to the camera. But okay, so that's the yarn. So I'm going to take you to a video. It's a different um, it, it'll be a different project that I did that video from but it's just a video of how to start this. So I did a good video that worked out. So we'll take you there and then I will catch you up with this stitch. So I will see you in a bit. So I'm going to show you how to start this piece. And I'm going to show you the cast on and the first few rows before we start into the pattern. The yarn I'm using for this is Atlantis. Uh, Estelle Atlantis and the color is Gleam and it's a combination of yellows and creams and uh, light taupe and copper and bronze and uh, lots of those colors in it and it's a bulky and it's um, um, I guess it's pretty close to charisma width to give you an idea of how big a bulky it is. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is a chain cast on. So what I do is I just make a slip knot. And any way you make a slip knot is fine. It just goes on the first peg like that. And we take the loom hook, put it inside the loop, and pick up a yarn. And so that we have a loop of yarn here. I'm just going to keep this tight over here and then I'm going to come over behind the next peg, put the working yarn through and snug it up. Behind, working yarn through, snug it up. Behind, whoop, 
behind and we caught two pegs, <laughs> snug it up. Behind, snug it up. And we just do that all the way around the loom. And that's a chain cast on. It's one of the crochet casts on, cast ons. Works really good. You can use a crochet hook to do this if you want. I find it a lot easier just to do with my hands. But if you're in a very tiny gauge loom, you might really need a hook to get your fingers in between the pegs. This uh, cast on can be used on any size of loom with the appropriate yarn for that gauge. I use this cast on with most of my pieces because I like the look of it. I do use other ones from time to time just because I think they go nicer with the work. But this one is nice. You don't have to worry about tightening any loops. It has a really nice appearance. And um, I just kind of do this weird thing when I do it because that helps me to get the right tension. But you can do it in one smooth motion too. Just the way I like to do the, the chain cast on. Get some more yarn out of here. Okay. Whoop, caught this in it. <laughs> there we go. And then I just plop it on the last peg. And then you notice there's a space here. You could also pop it on there, but I find it makes this really thick here. So what I've started doing is just ending right here when I do this cast on. And then just knit it off. And then we're just going to come over here and knit this to secure it. And then what I do, because there's only one piece of yarn coming here and it's thicker in here, is I take this loop that I had left and put it over here and then I just knit it over. And that makes it blend in better. At least that's what I think. And also this is partially secured already so it will stay tighter and not loosen up on you now, which sometimes happens. Okay, so um, what we're going to do with this stitch, and I've already done one knit stitch here, is we're just going to do a row of unit. So a row of unit right after the cast on. This completes the cast on part of it. And a unit is just over the peg like that and knit it off. If you're doing this pattern, I'd be pretty sure you already know how to unit, but just in case. And it gives you one of the, well, the real knit stitches, really, since E-Wrap is a twisted knit, and it's the same as knitting through the back loop and needle knitting. But these all give you the, the V stitch, which is the knit stitch. And the yarn has lots of nice color changes. I really like it. Oh, it's 50% wool and 50% acrylic. So really nice to work with. Unless you're one of those people that's allergic to wool. But if you're not, it's beautiful to work with. It just glides on. And we must almost be back there. <laughs> well, if it's not yet, we're almost back there. I was going to pause it if it was still a long ways. And I will do that on some of these rows just because it's going to really take up a lot of length in the video. Okay, Oop. 
And this is loose because it's this, this one right here. Okay, now what we're going to do is a row of pearl. So just go down, pull the working, pull some a loop up and do that. I'll do it slower, but you should know how to pearl. So we're just going to put this in just like the same way when we cast on. We came in through here. Now we're going to take this loop and pull it up just like we did with the cast on, except we're going to take everything off here and then just put the loop back on. You just put it right over like that. And that's all there is to a pearl. So we're just going to pearl all the way around. Just want to have a good strong non-curling base and of course when we cast off we're going to do the same thing do the same row as we did here so it matches okay i'm going to put it on pause while i go around and do the pearl okay so i completed my row of pearl now i'm going to do another row of unit followed by another row of pearl so that's all we're going to do is another row of knit and then another row of pearl. So what we did was we cast on, we did a row of U knit, and then we did a row of pearl, and then another row of U knit, and another row of pearl. So I'm just going to put you on pause, finish my row of knit, then I'm going to do my row of pearl, and then we'll be all ready to start the stitch. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, so I did the, the second row of knit and the second row of purl. And uh, this is what it looks like. It just gives you a, a beginning like that so that that edge will never curl. Okay, so now that you've got your cast on done, you're just going to start right into the stitch. So I will show you how to do the stitch. So you'll just start at whatever pegs you start at and you're just going to come in at the first two pegs that you're going to start at and you're going to go over them. Okay, um, I'm going to get quite close here because my yarn isn't very contrasty right now. Okay, so there you go. Um, so you're just going to put this over the first two pegs in your row. Okay. And then you're going to just knit them off nice and loose. And then you're going to take the working yarn and go back over those two pegs and knit them again. Nice and loose. And that's all there is to the stitch. Okay. And what it is, it's my twisty stitch done on two pegs. But now that we've done these two pegs, we have to do the next two pegs. We always do two peg pairs. So we did these two. Now we have to do these two. So we're going to take the working yarn, go behind, and then in front of the next two that we're doing. Okay? You see that? We're behind. This is number one peg we ended at. We did these two pegs. We go behind the two and over these two. And the way to remember that always is your yarn's going to be on peg one. When you've wrapped the two peg pairs, you've gone over this way, then you've come back this way. Your yarn will always be on peg one. So you always know that it's peg one and two, and you need to do the next set, peg one and two. So you have the yarn coming over onto the next two pegs. Okay? And then we're just going to knit them off nice and loose. And that's the first thing you need to know is to do it nice and loose because this stitch can tighten up on you if you're doing it too tight. So try your best to do it loose. Okay. So then we just come, we're on peg one again, we go behind and in front of the next two pegs we're going to do. And we knit the two pegs off just like that. Then we come back nice and loose and knit them off again. Okay, now another way to know that you're doing this right, if 
you look on the loom, here's the two we just wrapped, and here's the two we're going to wrap. And the two we're going to wrap, the working yarn, the, the, the work is way in here. You can see these two pegs weren't wrapped together this last round. And up here, you can see that they were. Because the yarn's right, it's right up to the front. We always want to be wrapping pegs that weren't wrapped together the last time because we're alternating. So the first time you go around, it'll be easy. You'll just do two pegs, two pegs, two pegs, two pegs. But when you're coming around again, you're now alternating them. That's because you're on the odd peg loom. Now, if you're on an even peg loom, you're going to have to pick one peg at the start where when you come close to that peg, you're going to have to wrap again. And the best way to do that is if you're supposed to wrap these two and you see that these two are wrapped together, you can always wrap these two to start your next row alternating. The, one of the pegs will get too many stitches, but that'll be your best way of blending it in if you have to be on an even peg loom. But anyway, here we are in peg one. There's peg one and two, and we're going to come over and in front of the next two. So those are the only things you need to know. But we just go around and around and uh, not even worry about it when you're on an odd peg loom because you're always going to be going around and alternating. But I have had patterns that had to be alternated and I've had only even peg looms before. So I've had to use them and do it, do it different. So you can do that if you have to. Especially if you want to make a matching hat or something like that. And uh, you only have even peg looms. You can make it work. Okay, so I'm just going to slow down a little bit. And show you the stitch again. Okay, so we're on peg one and two. We come from peg one, behind peg two, then in front and over the next two, and just knit them off. I also have a stitch video on YouTube, so if you need to look at the stitch a little bit better, you can. Okay, so that's all there is to this stitch. So now what you do is you just keep doing the stitch and you go around and around and you just keep going until you get it as long as you want. And I'm going to do a little bit more. So I'll let you catch up to me and then we'll, we'll do the finishing and bind off the cowl. So we'll see you in a few. Okay, so now all we have to do is do the same thing at the top that we did at the bottom. So we're going to do a row of purl, a row of knit, a row of purl, and then, um, you know, the ca a cast off. So you're just going to do the same thing, but in reverse that you did there. So go ahead and do that. Do your rows of knit and your rows of purl. Match what you did here, and then we'll be ready to do the bind off. So we will see you when you've done that, and we will catch up again. Okay, so we're all caught up. So again, all I did was I did a row of pearl, a row of knit, a row of pearl, and a row of knit again just to match what's here. And then we're ready to cast off. And um, what we do is it takes quite a bit of yarn for the stretchy cast off we're going to do. So you want to wrap your yarn around the loom at least one and a half, to, well, at least two times. Maybe even two and a half. It's better to have more yarn because then you don't have to put any more on there. And then just cut it because it does use quite a bit of yarn. Okay, and then you can just thread it on to a needle. A nice bright green needle here so you'll be able to see well. 
Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're always going to go down. So right where you got the yarn coming out of, you can go down that peg. Okay. And pull it through. And then you go over to the next peg here and you go up with the needle. Okay. And you just pull it a bit tight, not too tight. Then you're going to go between the two pegs that you just did. So see that between and behind the peg and then go down the next peg. And just make sure that you don't get the yarns all tangled up. Easy to do when you've got a fuzzy mohair one here. Okay. And then at, once we've gone down, we go back to the one before and we go up it. So we go back to the one we did before and go up. Snug it up just a little bit. Go behind. All right, go behind. Oh. Go between. Don't go be behind me. Go between the two pegs and over to the new peg. And we go down. So basically that's what we always do. Go down the new peg. Go up the old peg. Snug it up a bit. Go between them and behind, and then go down the new peg. And up the old peg. And that's all there is to doing this bind off. And this bind off is a really good one for matching the one that we used to cast on. Okay, so we go behind, over to the new peg, and we go down the new peg. up the peg we did before, snug it up a little bit, go between them, and down the new peg, and up the peg before. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead, we'll go all the way around and you're going to go around till you're at the peg before you started and we'll catch up right there at the end. Okay, so I'm nearing the end. So I just did this peg, so I'm going behind and down and up and behind. And then here's the peg we started at. So I'm going to go down it. And up this one. And that's all we have to do for now. I leave this long enough. And then we can just pop it off the loom. I get the loom hook. And, uh, and we'll do the little finish there after we get it popped off. And um, we'll have to stretch this a little bit, but as you see, it looks the same as the cast on, see? So, it's a really nice way to end it. And uh, I'll also have the cast off and the bind off linked 
on this video and then uh, if you need to look at them again um, you know how I recorded it on a different day you can <laughs> okay so here we go and then I'm just going to put the needle back on to make this easier to just finish this okay so you're all finished here and all you have to do is tie a, a little knot through here through the very end stitch so you just look at it Oop. and come back in to one of them and then just whoop there you just go through and make a knot like that to finish it so it's completely cast off and there you go and then you just can uh, weave in your end but uh, before we do that we just take the cowl and we're going to stretch it because you always stretch out your stitches when you're done so we're going to stretch it widthwise and of course we should stretch the new bind off as well and there we go here's your beautiful cowl be very nice on and and drape and and uh, look great on and uh, you just have to weave in the yarn at the end but here we'll take a look here's where we cast off and here's our our bind off and they match really really well and see the cowl both ends are the same there's no tighter end or anything like this you got stretch here you got stretch here so either side can be your top they both are going to look great so i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you enjoy the cowl and uh, until next time bye